the history of the most classic Gucci bags. Welcome to Luxfy, we talk about fashion, luxury and basically all the best things life has to offer. Welcome to our video about the history of the most classic Gucci bags. Gucci is the luxury fashion house we all know and love. In 1921, after spending years working as a bellhop at the Savoy Hotel in London, Gucci Gucci returned to Florence where he opened the first Gucci store, selling travel-centric leather goods. I do not have to tell you the success that followed. Gucci's sons opened up shops just about everywhere worth being seen. Since then, there have been amazing bags that truly became classics and that are a part of the history of fashion itself. And with the appointment of Alessandro Michel as creative director of Gucci in 2015, the Maison changed into a geek chic brand that also has new and exciting bags for us to lust over. Here I'll show you the history of six classic Gucci bags that I am sure you are going to love. At the end of the video, we have a bonus fact about Gucci materials that may surprise you. So without further ado, here is the history of the most classic Gucci bags. If you are new here, welcome! Please subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Luxficom. Number 6. The Soho Disco In 2012, the then creative director Frida Giannini launched the Soho Disco bag line, reported to be inspired by the party lifestyle of young people around Soho. Included in the line was a camera-style crossbody bag, crafted with a pebble calfskin leather and embossed with the interlocking double G logo. And like all Gucci bags, the Soho Discos are crafted in Prato, just outside of Florence. For the finishing touch, the bag features a heavy tassel as a zipper pull. The bag quickly gained IT bag status and appeared on the shoulders of IT girls worldwide, especially in the more colorful models. Now this Gucci bag is only available in black and beige, since this style is not so popular anymore. This is not a classic bag that will always remain in style, but nevertheless it is a part of Gucci handbag history, and it is so neutral you can wear it anywhere. There are rumors Gucci will discontinue this line, so if you want to buy it, be quick. This one is sold for $1,350. Number 5. Gucci Horsepit 1955 as the legend goes, the horse bit hardware entered Gucci's arsenal in 1953. It was Aldo Gucci, recognizing that shoppers liked a side of history with their bags, who perpetuated the myth that the Gucci family had once been saddle makers to nobility. Aldo leaned into the equine concept and under his direction taught teaching reminiscent of that on saddles, adorned handbags, and green and red stripes seen on girth straps became a signature Gucci element, as did the Gucci horse bit. Although even went so far as to replace the bell hop and not to Gucci's early job in the Gucci crest with a knight in armor. Since the horse bit appeared on a handbag in 1955, that elegant hardware has become as recognizable as the Chanel double C's. Tom Ford, Alessandra Facchinetti, and Frida Giannini all incorporated the horse bit into their designs, and current Gucci creative director Alessandro Michel has given us the latest iteration. Presented at the House Cruise 2020 collection, the reprised Gucci Horsebit 1955 bag comes in various shapes, like tote, satchel, and shoulder bag, all unified by the instantly identifiable double D rings. After all, there is no need for a Gucci logo when its signature hardware is present. This bag is extremely classic, and is one you can be sure you will love for many years to come. This small Gucci Horsebit 1955 is sold for $2,550. Number 4. The Dionysus Alessandro Michel's first bag for Gucci represents perfectly the new geek chic style of the brand. The crossbody bag features a double flap shape in Gucci's coated canvas textile, and it's closed with a U-shaped hardware that can be traced back to Gucci's fall 2015 ready-to-wear collection. Dionysus is the god of agriculture, wine, and partying, so it is only appropriate that the bag that takes his name has this more is more style. The tiger closure of the bag is also inspired by mythology. Dionysus is said to have crossed the river Tigris on a tiger, sent to him by Zeus. The sliding chain strap can be worn multiple ways, changing between a shoulder and a top handle bag. This is a classic Gucci bag, and there are so many iterations of the bag, I am sure you will find one you love. 
This one in red and pink leather is sold for $2,890. If you are enjoying this video so far, please subscribe to my channel. And if you are already subscribed, please click the bell button so you can get a notification every time I post a new video. Number 3. The Jackie 1961 Like the enduring allure of the woman it's named after, the Jackie is a bag that will never go out of style. In 1961, Gucci introduced a hobo-style bag that caught the eye of Jackie Kennedy, whose husband so famously loved Gucci's loafer moccasins. It is said that upon seeing a paparazzi image of Jackie Kennedy with the bag, then called 50's Constance, the Gucci family quickly changed the name to the Jackie. This classic hobo shape saw many iterations under Tom Ford and Frida Giannini, but its latest incarnation comes by way of Michelle, who in 2021 gave us a spin on the Jackie, with a bit more structure, an adjustable strap, and a piston closure. Brought back to the forefront, the recognizable shape is presented in many materials, like leather and the Gigi Supreme Compass. No matter which one you choose, this is a beautiful bag that will be a cherished item in your wardrobe forever. This small Jackie 1961 shoulder bag in black leather is sold for $2,500. Number 2. The Marmont this is not so much a single bag as it is a whole family of bags, with different colors, materials, and patterns. Not long into his tenure as Gucci's creative director, Michel gave us the Marmont bags, with a chain strap crossbody as the signature style. They debuted on the fall 2016 runways, capturing everything Michel intended to bottle up and sell in a bag form. The untethered bohemian spirit of the 70s and the glamour of the Chateau Marmont, the hotel representing the old Hollywood glamour. On the back, Michel introduced his flipped Gucci logo, adorning a semi-puffed chevron-style quilted pattern. The Marmont collection also includes totes, backpacks, and bucket bags. This is a classic Gucci bag, but in my opinion, it is not worth the investment. There are so many Marmont bags out there that not only they don't hold their value very well in the resale market, but you are also due to get tired of the style since you will see it everywhere you go. I do still like the seasonal models and limited editions, but taste is subjective. So if you like this bag, you don't have to listen to anyone's opinion, just go for it. This one is sold for $2,350. Number 1. The Diana In the late 1990s, one often saw Princess Diana out and about with a bamboo-handled Gucci bag. Hers was in a booty colored suede, and even when she wore it with biker shorts and sweatshirts on trips to the gym, she made it look divine. The first Gucci bamboo handle bag was launched in 1947, and since then the bamboo has remained an icon of the house. On the day that would have been Princess Diana's 60th birthday, Alessandro Michel presented the Diana bag, a bamboo handle tote much like the version worn by the princess. Speaking to the narrative of evolution and reinvention that runs through Gucci's designs, the bag is reimagined by Alessandro Michel in three different sizes, with removable neon leather belts, a nod to the functional bands that once came with the original bag, to maintain the shape of the handles. It also comes with the double Gs facing the same direction, which are Michel's remix of the classic Gucci monogram. The Gucci Diana represents the cycle of reinvention and being free to be who you are, something the original poster girl for this bag would no doubt support. This is for sure a classic bag that will not go out of style. It is rooted in history. The medium one is sold for $3,980, and the mini is $2,750. All the bags seen on this video are linked below. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite. Comment below which brands you would like to know more about. And for sticking with us this far, here is some bonus information. The fascist regime in Italy made Gucci foray into different materials. A trade embargo placed on Italy during Mussolini's rule meant that materials, leather in particular, were scarce. So Guccio and his sons, Aldo Vasco and Rodolfo, had to get creative, making wicker, raffia and wood Gucci signatures, in addition to Cuyo Grasso, an incredibly smooth veal calf leather. At around the same time, Gucci also developed a woven hemp textile, with a diamond pattern, a predecessor to the current double G monogram. 
around 1947, which made fashion history with its bamboo-handled bag, a structured little purse adorned with a bamboo handle, bent by the heat of a flame, that was instantly popular. Thank you for spending some time with us, and make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss a video. In return, I'll provide you with the best content about fashion, travel, and luxury living. See you soon!